Okay, still here in linear regression unit four, but we're gonna go through some examples, some real life examples. Um, we're still in Desmos though, so I'm gonna do this video in Desmos. We're gonna jump over to that right now. All right, guys, back here on the computer dealing with more line of best fit problems. But for these, we are going to be just going through this review sheet I made for my Algebra 1 class that we did in previous years, and we're just going to go through it. All right. So we're just going to start with this number two. It says, the table shows the cost of renting a moving truck based on a survey. All right. So we've got the hours that they rent the, the truck and then the cost, right? And so the hours is going to be that independent variable because the cost depends on the number of hours that you rent the truck for, right? So what we can do is go in here, put in these values into the table, right? So it's hard to show both at the same time, but we'll make it work. So the hours can be that x variable, so I'm going to type all those values in right here, and then I'll type in all the y values next to it. So again, you might be saying, where's all our points? What the heck? And again, they're here, and we talked about last time too how you can adjust your uh, little view here to match more with the uh, values that are in the table. So I'm going to make the x-axis from... Um, like, because there's no negative value. So I'll just go from like negative 1 to 15. Again, you like to go a little bit smaller and a little bit bigger from what your highest and lowest values are. And so for the y values, I'll start at 0 and I'll go to, I don't know, like 120. So there, again, we just get a better view of it here, right? Here's all the points. All right, yeah, we see that it's not an exact straight line. It's pretty close, but it's not exact. Okay, so it's asking us here in this problem, which is the closest equation for the line of best fit? Okay, so we look at this, and what we would do is, again, to find the exact equation of the line of best fit, you could type in that linear regression model equation, right? That's that y1, and then the squiggly, and then mx1 plus b. Again, that's that equation I showed you guys last time. That gives you the line of best fit. Um, when you're when you have a scatter plot in Desmos, okay. Again, it gives you all this crazy stuff, but what you're concerned with is the M and B values, okay. So M is 6.65, and B is 30.33, okay. So we look at the multiple choice options, and we say, okay, which one matches? And again, the M values first, so that's going to be the one with the X, and that's positive 6.65. So we can get rid of these guys. We know it's not going to be either of those. And the B value is positive, 30.33. So we know that it is C because that D, letter D, is um, right has a negative B value. So it's got to be C here, right? Because that matches. So it says, the next one, number four, you measure the height of your baby sibling from the time they are one year old until they are six years old. And your findings are below. Okay. You're measuring your baby sibling because they're getting taller. And they're growing up. And so again, same process. So we need to put this table in Desmos. Again, the years old is going to be my x values. And then the length of the baby, or the height, I should say, is the y values. Anyway, so we're looking at this. And OK, we still want the line of best fit. So same dang equation. y1 squiggly mx1 plus plus b. And there we are, you see it, and it gave, me, it gave it to me in red this time. Very fun. And so we've got the equation, okay, or the, the not the equation, but the m and b values, right? m is 2.66 if we rounded it, b is 30.5. And so I want us to graph it here. Again, you could, if you had this sheet of paper in person, you could plot all these points, right? The next one, find the line of best fit equation, okay? So again, y equals mx plus b. So if I round those, it would be y equals y equals 2.66x plus 30.5. Okay, so that would be about it, all right? And then, again, it's not going to be exact, but it says for letter C, using the equation, estimate the height of the child after 10 years. Okay, now how do we do that? So what we have to, what it's asking for, right, now that we have this equation, it's saying estimate the height of the child after 10 years. Okay, if they're 10 years old, how tall are they going to be? Again, the key here is that we look at 10 years, okay, and it's going to, when it gives you a variable like this, right, we have to say, okay, that 10, is that going to be an x or a y value, right? And we tie that into the table, right? 
So we look and see, okay, years old and length in inches, right? So 10 years, obviously that makes this an x value, okay? So it's telling me in this scenario, okay, x equals 10, and I have to find or estimate the height or length either way. And so what I do then is it's giving me an x value, so I plug in y equals 2.66 times 10 plus 30.5, okay? So I can plug that in and do that, and then I can do that mathematically. So if I go back over to Desmos, that can take care of that for me too. So 2.66 times 10 plus 30.5, 57.1 inches at 10 years old. Just to give you some context, that is about four foot and nine inches tall. So pretty big 10 year old, but could happen. So 57.1 inches tall is how they would how tall they would be after 10 years, which again could happen. But look what it says. It says using the equation, estimate the height of the child after 30 years. Do you think this is reasonable? And explain. Okay, do I think this is reasonable? Well, again, it's saying estimate it after 30 years. Last time I said 10 years. So I'm gonna do the same thing with that 30. I'm gonna say, okay, y equals 2.66 times 30 plus 30.5. I'm going to get an answer to that. Okay, so let me go back to Desmos. Instead of 10 in there, I'm going to put a 30. Okay, and that would be, so when that happens, y equals 110 inch, 110.3 inches. And just to give you some context there, a baby that would, or a 30 year old that would be 110 inches tall would be about uh, 9 feet and 2 inches tall which is taller than any person who's ever lived. So when you're looking at this, it says, do you think this is reasonable? Explain. Okay, again, this is what happens in real life problems. You have to kind of think of it. Okay, why is this not reasonable? So if I was answering this question, I would say, no, this is not reasonable. And again, why does that happen? Why would that happen? Well, this is kind of saying, this is assuming, right, thinking about this, this would be saying, okay, the ba and it's not exact, right? It's not going to be perfect, but this is saying, okay, the baby grows 2.66 inches per year, right? And that's constant. Every single year they grow 2.66 inches. And if you guys think about that, right, that's not realistic, right? After a certain point, you stop growing. You stop growing after a certain point. So know that it's not reasonable. The child stops growing, right? So at a certain point, instead of being a straight line continuing to go up like this, it would eventually taper off, right? After like 18, 20 years old, that person is not gonna grow at all. So that's not that's why that is unreasonable. All right, I just wanna do one more problem here with you that I copied over. Okay, this one says, the table below gives the height and shoe sizes of six randomly selected men. Okay, and so it gives their height, and it's saying their shoe size, right? The Y value is dependent on what their height is. Again, what we wanna do here is we wanna put in a table of values, okay? So I'm actually going to keep this equation in just because I don't have to type it in again. But when you do that, look, your table says x2 and y2 now. And this still says x1 and y1. So if you would type values in here, it's going to give you an error, right? Because it's not going to know where to look. So make sure if you're being lazy like me and not wanting to type that equation in again, you change your table to say x1 and y1. Okay, the height, right? The height of the x values. So I'm going to type those across on the left side of the table. Okay, now all your points are here, right? And I could change the zoom to make it, but I won't worry about that right now. So if I was wondering what the equation is, right? Again, looking at these m and v values, okay? So, and these values might not make a whole lot of sense, but again, we're just doing what it asks, give the line of best fit equation for that data. So it would be y equals 0.42x, and again, a b value is negative, right? So negative 19.81. So that would go here, the line of best fit equation, okay, I, I uh, copied it over, so that's just the equation. And then it says, if a man has a shoe size of 10.5, what would be his predicted height? Show all your work. So hopefully you would, okay, so if the shoe size is 10.5, now this is what I, that's why I wanted to do this one, okay. 10.5, the shoe size is a y value, okay, so 10.5 equals 0.42x minus 19.81. Okay, now this is solving for his height, the x value, okay? So we plugged in 10.5 for the y, and I'm gonna solve this, okay? I'm gonna solve this equation like I normally would solve equations, right? Solve it for x. 
So I would plus that 19.81 to both sides. Okay, and when I do that, I'm left with 10.5 plus 19.81 would give me 30.31. And then the 0.42x is all that's left over here on the, on the right side. Okay, and then I divide by that 0 0.42 from both sides, right? Because that's getting rid of my x, or getting rid of my coefficient with the x. Okay, so divide by 0 0.42, and I don't know that one in my head, so let me just go over here. And so you're saying 72.17. 72 inches. Okay, and so that's about six feet, a little over six feet tall. And that's about my exact specifications. I wear about a size 10 and a half, and I'm about six feet tall, so that's pretty cool. So, okay, so that's the deal there. When it gives you a Y value, you have a little bit more work to do to find that answer. But, yeah, make sure it matches and that it fits in with, right, the other values in the table, right? So at a size, size shoe of like 10 and a half, it should be a height that's kind of between these two, and it is. So that's how you can make sure that it's a good answer. Okay, so that's a little bit more with linear regression. Okay, that's about all we're going to do. Um, so there we go. So hopefully that made sense. Thanks for following.